In 1955, Joseph Luft and Harry Ingham developed a theory based on Freud's ideas to explain personal development and interpersonal dynamics. They proposed that a person's psyche consists of a conscious and an unconscious part, while interactions with others can be divided into what we share and what we withhold. Others may, however, see aspects of a person that the individual themselves do not recognize. For example, Alex may have private thoughts while conversing with Sandra. The conversation is conscious, but they may also observe things in each other that they, as individuals, are not aware of in themselves. Beyond the private and shared aspects, they both possess unknown resources. In Lufton Ingham's Johari Window model, a person's psyche is divided into an open area, conscious and visible, a blind area, unconscious to the individual but visible to others, a hidden area, private yet conscious, and an unknown area, unconscious and invisible. In the context of Alex and Sandra, if we overlay the model as a mirrored reflection, we can analyze their communication. They consciously interact, observing each other's open areas. For instance, they might discuss a leadership program they're both engaged in. Alex might notice aspects of Sandra's body language she's unaware of, revealing her blind area. The same applies to Alex. His expressions might unintentionally indicate a lack of preparation. The third element in analyzing their interaction is emotional contagion, where one's attitudes or feelings can influence the other, often unconsciously. You may have experienced this, a conversation with a colleague might leave you feeling unexpectedly cheerful or downcast. Now, regarding personal and organizational development, as the model shows, there's both a conscious and unconscious part of our psyche. Receiving feedback, engaging in personal development, and reflecting critically on one's behavior can increase self-awareness, expanding the open area. In a supportive climate, people may feel secure enough to share more about themselves. With psychological safety, you are likely to openly express your views, experiences and ideas. Conversely, in a defensive climate with issues like unresolved conflicts or bullying, individuals will share less, reducing the open area. Returning now to emotional contagion, this phenomenon plays a significant role in shaping the dynamics of these interactions. The Pygmalion effect describes how high expectations can improve performance, while low expectations can hinder it. Named after the Greek myth of Pygmalion, the phenomenon was studied by psychologists Robert Rosenthal and Lenore Jacobson, who proposed in Pygmalion in the classroom that teacher expectations could shape student performance. They found that students labeled as intellectual bloomers, based on random selection, showed higher IQ gains, particularly in early grades, suggesting teacher expectations influence student achievement. Rosenthal and Jacobson's work suggests that teachers' attitudes or subconscious behaviors spurred by higher expectations could foster better performance, known as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Though the Pygmalion effect is widely referenced in education and social psychology, later studies questioned its replicability and methodological rigor. Leadership as a mediator. Research by Eden and Shani identified leadership behaviors as mediating factors in the Pygmalion effect. Leaders with high expectations create a positive cycle where subordinates adopt and internalize those expectations, termed the Pygmalion leadership style, PLS. Leaders often enact this unconsciously, reinforcing higher performance. The Galatea effect. Eden and Ravid described a related concept, the Galatea effect, where trainees' own high self-expectations, often influenced by leaders, can enhance their performance. In studies, direct encouragement, informing trainees of their high potential, further boosted outcomes, indicating that both external expectations and internalized self-belief can drive success. Follow for more.